Hello, math humans. We're going to do 2.3 today. We're going to be talking about the product and the quotient rules. Our objectives are that we're going to find derivatives using the product and quotient rules. So for the product rule, we'll just write those out ahead of time. The derivative of f of x times g of x, and here's the way I think about it. It's the first thing times the derivative of the second plus the second thing times the derivative of the first. That's how I remember it. The quotient rule has a cute little rhyme or jingle or whatever. If I have f of x divided by g of x, the quotient rule is low d high minus high d low over low squared, okay? So I'll write those words out because the quotient rule is a little bit more entertaining. It's low times the derivative of the high minus high times the derivative of the low over low squared. And so that would be how we calculate or use the quotient rule. So when I do these, the product rule is easiest. And sometimes it is in your best interest to rewrite a quotient rule as a product rule. We'll do examples of both. But there are times when you just have to manage the quotient rule. So let's just do some examples. So for the first example, I want to take the derivative and I want to do 3x minus 2x squared times 5 plus 4x. Now there are two different ways to solve this problem. I could distribute this and then take the derivative, but occasionally that becomes really difficult. And so I can just manage these pieces. So because I want to illustrate the product rule, that's what I'm going to do. So when I do the derivative, this is going to be the first thing times the derivative of the second, which is 4, plus the second thing times the derivative of the first, which is 3 minus 4x. Okay, and remember, the 2 comes out front. That's where the 4 came from. And then the 2 minus 1 is why this is a power. And then I'm going to have to simplify this. Okay, so if I do the simplification, 4 times 3, this is 12x minus 8x. Um, this is the first thing times the derivative of the second. That's correct. Okay, sorry, I was going to say, why is this not working? Oh, that's why it's not working. Whew, that took me a little while. 8x squared. Whew, now we're back on track. And then I did that one. So then when I multiply this one together, I'm going to get 15 minus 20x plus 12x minus 16x squared. And then I'm going to combine like terms. Sorry, that took me a little while to figure out where I'd made my mistake. And I'm going to get that the derivative is equal to a negative 24x squared plus 4x plus 15. So a negative 8 and a negative 16 is the negative 24. 12 minus 20 and 12. 24 minus 20 is the positive 4. And then there's my 15. Whew, that was a rough one. All right, let's do our next example. So example number 2, I'm going to do f of x is equal to 3x squared sine of x. And I want to know what is the derivative. So this is going to be the quotient rule. Here's the first thing, and then this would be the second thing. So f prime of x using the product rule is the first thing, the derivative of sine is cosine, plus the second thing times the derivative of the first, which is going to be 3 times 2 is 6x. So remember for the derivative, the power comes out front. That's where the 6 came from and 2 minus 1 is 1, and then I'm just going to clean this up. This is 3x squared cosine of x plus 6x sine of x, label my work, and then we're done. Okay? All right. 
So now let's do an example of the quotient rule. So for example, number three, I'm going to have f of x is equal to 5x minus 2 over x squared plus 1, and I want to find the derivative. Okay? All right. And so I'm going to say my words as I go. And remember, it's low d high minus high d low over low squared. So f prime of x is going to equal. So it's low times the derivative of the high. Remember, 5x, the power is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. The x goes away, so I get the 5. The derivative of a constant is 0 minus the top thing. Your parentheses are very important. Times the derivative of the low 2x all over x squared plus 1 squared. Now, I will tell you, do not ever distribute down here because oftentimes I can simplify the top and some of this might go away. I'm going to clean up the top. I have 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x squared. This is a negative 4x, positive 4x over x squared plus 1 squared. And I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. So f prime of x is equal to a negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5 over x squared plus 1 squared. And if you'll remember from pre calc we usually do not distribute the denominator because this tells me where my asymptotes are. It gives me a variety of pieces of information, so do not distribute on the bottom. The next thing that I want to give you are the derivatives of more of your trig functions. Sometimes we all make math mistakes, and we just have to be a little bit diligent to figure out where they came from. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. The derivative of the cosine of x is a negative sine x. The derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. So before I do more, here's the thing that I want you to pay attention to. Notice that my variables match. If the variables don't match, then I have some more math to do. But for right now, those variables match, which is really, really nice. But it is something that you always want to make sure that is a true statement. The second set, the derivative of the cosecant of x. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. The derivative is going to be a negative cosecant x cotangent x. The derivative of the secant of x is secant x tangent x. And then the derivative of cotangent x is a negative cosecant squared x. So one of my students said one of the ways that he remembered shortcuts was the derivative of things that start with a C are negative. So this starts with the C, it's negative. This starts with the C, it's negative. So those were one of the tricks that he used to be able to remember all of his derivatives. All right, our next example, I'm grab a different color pen. So example number four. When we do derivatives, we are learning tools. So we were adding tools to our toolbox. The product rule and the quotient rule are tools. That doesn't mean that you're always going to use them. Sometimes it's easier to turn a quotient into a product. So for this problem, we're going to have 1 minus the cosine of x over the sine of x, and I want to find the derivative. Now, I could do this problem with the quotient rule, and that is absolutely okay. I don't use the quotient rule unless I absolutely have to, so I'll show you both methods just to confirm. So let's say I do the quotient rule first, and we're just going to do that for posterity. And remember, it's low d high minus high d low over low squared. So if I start doing that math, f prime of x is going to equal low 
times the derivative of the high. The derivative of cosine is a negative sine. So I would do times the sine of x minus the high times the derivative of the low. The derivative of sine is the cosine of x over the low squared. And so I could simplify this. This is sine squared x minus 1 times cosine is the cosine of x. This is a negative cosine squared positive cosine squared x over the sine of x, sine squared of x. Remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is going to be 1 minus the cosine of x because that is a Pythagorean identity. Yes, those still come into play. And then 1 minus cosine of x over sine squared x. And then I could do some finagling and I could reduce it from there. I could reduce this as 1 plus cosine squared x. And then if I fixed that to be 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus the cosine of x, yeah, math, those cancel. And so I would get that the derivative is 1 over 1 plus the cosine of x. Okay? And then I could stop. I will tell you that your book tends to go further than they would tell us to go when you're taking your exam. So you always need to get it to a point where you can substitute values in. If it had been me, I probably would have stopped there. Now let me show you how to take the derivative, same derivative, by splitting apart. So basically, I'm going to rewrite the original function. So this was 1 minus the cosine of x over the sine of x. And I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over the sine of x minus the cosine of x over the sine of x. And sometimes one way is easier than another, but I just wanted to show you both. So that means that my function, 1 over sine, is the cosecant of x. Cosine over sine is the cotangent of x. Well, I have rules for both of those. So now the derivative f prime of x is going to equal a negative cosecant x cotangent x plus cosecant cosecant squared x because the derivative of cotangent is a negative, negative, negative is a positive, and then I'm done. And this derivative is not in the same form as this derivative. I could force it to get there. But at this point, now I can insert values and then I could evaluate the derivative. So I would not choose to simplify this, okay? All right, so either method is appropriate. Sometimes one is easier than another. So another thing that we want to talk about is f prime of x is called the first derivative. And I've alluded to this in another video. That's the first derivative. f double prime of x is called the second derivative. And it is the derivative of f prime of x. Okay. And then f triple prime of x would be the third derivative. And that would be the derivative of the second derivative, okay? And we don't often have to do a third derivative, but we can take an unlimited number of derivatives, all right? So if we take this into consideration with our position function, remember that s of t is position. s prime of t is velocity. And s double prime of t is acceleration. Can't spell today. Woo, that was rough. Okay, is acceleration. Okay, so you can do many different types of derivatives. You do have to pay attention to the notation. All right, my dears, that is it for today. I will see you soon.